<laughs> being real, right? It's all so, about being real. Let's just be honest. And I, well, let's just be honest. And I know that you and I resonate on that very much so. Yes. Um, and reading over your bio and everything, I'm like, God, I forget how much you and I are just like. It's like, ridiculous. So I know we were like destined to be friends. I know. I can't wait to see you this year. You're going to celebration, right? Of course I yeah. am. Of course. I feel like it's a no brainer, but I've asked some people and I was like, I thought you'd be there. But anyway, yeah. So that's fun. Um, what's the weather like by you today? Is it nice out? Um, it's actually blue skies, which is shocking because the last couple of days have not been. And then like the weekend, it was like hotter. It was hot as blazes. And then we had two cloudy days and now we're like, oh, all right. Blue skies today. That's cool. Whatever. Why not? Right? Yeah. That's we are not crazy. like y'all having like crazy. Uh, no, we're yeah. like, if it gets to like eighties, people are bitching. <laughs> They are well, not, ha that is not happiness in Washington if it gets into the 80s. <laughs> yeah, right? No kidding. Oh my gosh. But well, we don't have the humidity that you guys have. Right. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I feel like people really hate it here because it gets humid. Like it's, it, it's only nice, like very few times. And then it's everyone bitching about it because either uh -huh. it's too cold or it's too hot and humid. And I'm like, you guys complain about everything. Yeah. They could also move to another location where it doesn't, right? Where they're not hating the weather. Imagine that. Imagine that. The freedom to just do that if they really, really I know. Like, it's not like they're moving out of the country. They could do that too. They could. More power to them. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. We're just no <laughs> people. It's just what it is. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come share your story with us. Of course. And, um, I, I'm just, I'm always so excited to get to talk to you. As, as I pointed out, we always have so much in common and it's just, it's just always so fun to catch up with people that have so much things in, in common and we're both not no BS kind of people. So the conversations just go and go and go. I mean, we could talk all day. So <laughs> I know we could ramble for days. No, we won't ramble. We won't we'll ramble be, for days. We'll be very but... specific. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Well, I'm going to give um, everyone a little intro of you officially so they can get a taste of who Elaine is. And, um, and then we'll just start the conversation and the interview Perfect. from there. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, everyone. So this is Elaine Terso. She has been a business owner since 2001. Started her first company, Scrapping It For You. She had, she made scrapbooks. I can see the corner of my eye. You smiling. Hey, that's me. Hey. Uh, she made scrapbooks for people who didn't have the creativity nor the time to create their family heirlooms. In 2009, Elaine started adding photography in her scrapbooking business and soon realized that photography was where her passion was. Elaine started to grow her business in 2012. She took her business full time, quit her nine to five office job and did what she loved for a career. She discovered how important networking was and discovered she had a gift. Connecting the right business owners together to collaborate or connect was something that others would look forward to in conversations. Elaine discovered a new gift, the gift of the brain while connecting with other business owners, she began starting to spew out ideas, out ideas so fast that it, that it was hard for people to keep up by taking notes. So they would record their conversations. Well, fancy that we're going to record this right now. And yeah. Elaine, again, thank you so much for your time. I'm so looking forward to introducing you to the people that get to watch this and have the pleasure of hearing your story specifically. And um, I want to dive in by you just telling us something relatable about you or just something fun about you, which everything is fun. So share whatever the hell you want. <laughs> well, how about my nickname is Elaine the Brain. Yes, which is yeah. so great because of what you're going into now. Yeah. And I've known you for, I don't know, Several probably years. two and a half, almost three years now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and you had the nickname before, right? Like, I feel like I heard that in Denver. It was, it was like starting. Yeah. So that's kind of where it was starting. Um, 
was this like side thing where I was um, just helping other business owners just while we were connecting in like just having a regular connect and I was still doing photography and everything and I'm transitioning out of that. My hands hurt, you know, carrying that camera around for 10 years. My cam my hands are like, ow. Um, so I'm kind of transitioning um, out of photography and um, more into mentoring and strategizing and just um, creating an online course right now and, you know, just doing the things. Um, and I just love helping people find their aha moments, whether that's within the confidence within themselves or, you know, just now having clarity and saying, oh my gosh, now I know where I need to go. Like now I have a map. Like I love it when they get those like, oh, like you can yeah. see their whole energy shift as soon as it happens. And I love being a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. It. It's so, it's so um, contagious too. Like mm -hmm. you like hear one person's conversation that clicks and like, oh, who else can I like give this energy to, which is a really yes. great idea. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so you said you did photography then since 2009, you're transitioning out of that. And just again, where are you located? I'm in Washington state. So a ferry ride away from Seattle. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yes, I can't wait to come see you. Yay, I know. I'm excited too. Um, okay, so um, do you have a family? Tell us a little bit about you, your background. Yeah, so I've been, um, my husband and I have been married for, uh, let's see here, since 2001. We've been married. Um, so we've been together for 21 years. Yeah. Um, my daughter is 22. And she um, lives um, outside the house. She's a car saleswoman for Toyota. I nice. see her every day because I'm like her doggy daycare. Um, <laughs> and uh, she doesn't want to leave her dog home alone to tear up her house because she works really long hours. So she brings them over every day. And Is that um, the dog you just shoot out of the room before we started? Yeah, one of them. Yeah, Jax. Yeah. And then because uh, I have two dogs myself. And, okay. Uh, my son is going to be 18 this November, so he's about to be, he's a senior this year in high school. Football is consumed, consumes our lives. Um, yeah, so my kids are older, which is actually really cool because, um, like, I don't know, I just have you the freedom. Right now. I have the freedom to do whatever the hell I want to do. And I'm not going to lie, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yes. Well, and, and you, can use the beautiful brain. Yeah. you can use the beautiful brain more, right? Like you don't have so yeah. many people needing your assistant mm -hmm. yeah. where you can actually like form your thoughts fully. Yeah. No, it's like, I'm not, I'm not a chauffeur anymore. Like it's, oh, I just can't even tell you how liberating it is. <laughs> Self-sufficient and independent. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's dive in about fear specifically for you. So mm -hmm. when tell, we're going to talk about a significant time in your life when fear held you back from living your life fully. So go ahead yep. and tell us about that time. I was just talking to a gal this morning who was struggling. And um, so I'm like, all right, I'm just going to lay it out there for you because I figured out where my, like, I figured it out. You know, it's like that aha moment. So Yay. I was a teenager doing naughty things and um, I was, interestingly enough, I was, I was like the good girl, right? I got good grades. I was pretty quiet, which a lot of people are like, you quiet? I was, I was kind of quiet. Um, but my friend and I decided we were going to skip school to go spend the day with our boyfriends. And um, I did not plan on my mother being home from work sick that day. Oh no. And so the school called because, you know, they actually like call like a real person, not like a robobot, you know, anymore um, like they do nowadays where it's like a robot calling your parents. Um, I and my so my mom called my dad at work and my dad was waiting for us at the end of the bridge as we we're walking home. Like we had been at school all day, like we had planned it perfectly. And we <laughs> get home at the same time that we normally would and everything. And my dad was waiting for us at the end of the bridge. 
and I said, oh, mm, right? I was, I was like, well, um, Jennifer, you need to sit in the front seat because my dad is going to murder me. So uh, when we got to my house, her parent, my friend's parents were there too. So we got double busted, right? And I learned that disappointing others did not feel very good. And so uh, my dad had said he wasn't angry, but he was disappointed. Mm. And that's like stabbing you in the heart. Like your, your heart drops into your stomach. It is the worst feeling to have someone tell you that they're disappointed in you. So Elaine learned at 14 years old, don't disappoint other people. Yeah. And so what happened, what the result of that was, was Elaine became the overachieving people pleaser. I did everything. I took on everything. I was the oldest child as well. So I had, you know, the older sister responsibilities, um, yeah. you know, and it, it sucked because I carried that into my adulthood of don't disappoint others. And yeah. so that meant I didn't trust anyone else to do tasks because it was my ass on the line. I'm responsible. I have to be responsible. So I'm going to do all the work because you're not capable, right? You're not going to do it the right way. I'm going to look bad. I'm going to disappoint the person who has asked me to do such task. So I uh, lived with a lot of stress and overwhelm and just chaos, literally, yeah. because I was trying to do everything for everyone. So this wow. fear of disappointing others um, as the people pleaser part of me meant that I didn't say no, which meant that I didn't have boundaries. It meant mm -hmm. that I was responsible for everyone else's happiness and uh, everybody had to like me because that wasn't, you were not allowed to not like me because right. I'm a people pleaser. So yeah. what do I got to do to make you like me, right? And yeah. it sucks. It absolutely sucks. So now that I am aware <laughs> of, these, of this issue, it takes a lot of work on yourself to yeah. kind of get through all of that. Um, yeah. You know, things are a lot better. Um, just being aware of it, I think, is like key first step. First step. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. So you said something about you were on a color. So the, the the going back to the fourteen, like finding out at that age in that specific moment, mm -hmm. was this something that you your aha moment was recently, or have you known that and you've been moving forward with the the know how of your people pleasing? So, oh, um, God. well. It's interesting because my journey has kind of taken like little, you know, I feel like I'm on, like I have steps, you know what I mean? Sure. That I just keep climbing. So my first big step was my confidence in myself step, which happened probably my daughter was about nine or so when I, when I got my, my confidence aha moment that I okay. no longer gave a shit, gave any cares about what other people thought about. Um, me or my body. Um, and I had my freeing moment, you know, where um, I went to the mall. So, well, just kind of a backstory. So when I was five years old, um, I was burned. Um, my shirt caught on fire. And so I have scars, which you can't see because I have tattoos. Um, but it kept me covered in sweaters. And I would wear a dress with a sweater. I like, I was so afraid of people seeing that I had scars, like, oh God, I'm a freak or some bullshit like that. Yeah. And my daughter, one day I used to like call myself fat ass and thunder thighs and I used to say really hurtful things about myself. Mm -hmm. And one day my daughter was nine and said, complained about her thighs at nine years old. And I'm like going, this is my time machine moment. This is when I go back in time and yeah. I change what I say because I did not respond properly. I wasn't mature enough yet in my own journey to really know how to respond in a, to a nine-year-old who's complaining about her body. Right. And um, it was the Tyra Banks show, interestingly, uh, that I stumbled on one day. And it was an episode about mothers and daughters. And this, you know, they always have a psychologist on there or whatever. And she said something that always stuck with me that 
um, daughters don't want to be better than their mothers. And I was like, oh shit. Like there was, there was just something in that that said, you cannot talk this way about yourself and expect your daughter to love her body if you don't love yours. So okay. I made a commitment to stop the body, the bad body talk and just like cold turkey, just stop. And so that meant that I had to demonstrate, I had to, I had to walk the walk, talk the talk and show my daughter that I was no longer going to live in fear of what other people thought of me. And that was the day that I went to the mall with a baby doll dress, spaghetti straps, and no sweater. And my husband was like, are you okay? I'm not really sure what's going on. Like, Did you forget your sweater? or Yeah, I'm just, just making sure you're okay. Like, I don't really know what to do here. Like, what is the proper husband response? Not really sure. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. Let's go. And because in my head, I had built, I had told myself this story because that's what we do. We make up stories in our minds yeah. that everyone's going to laugh at me. Everyone's going to point and stare and, and call me names. And none of that happened. Nope. Like it was just my own bullshit. Right. And yeah. so that was like, that was the day that I, that, that I got my sexy back. Right. Um, and, and I, I was like, you know what, how can I help other people like find their confidence too? Because um, it's a, it's a problem that, yeah. you know, we are so hard on ourselves, um, living up to some societal standard that I don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were trying to please some invisible society that I don't even know where they come from and who wrote the rules of who, what you have to look like. I don't even know where that comes from, but mm -hmm. I just decided that I was not, I was no longer going to play by anybody else's rules. And I was just going to make up my own damn rules. And I was just going to be comfortable with myself and screw anyone who said anything differently. Yeah. So was that like 2009? That's when you started your photography, right? Is that around yeah. the same? Time? Yeah, probably around that time frame. Um, and I just, you know, it was, I don't know, just happened. And I just, it was like that bold, that bold move, you know, and I think sometimes uh, we just have to take big action. Um, sometimes it's, it's bigger than baby steps. Sometimes it's a big action and it's yeah. doing the thing that scares the shit out of you anyways, doing yeah. it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. Exactly. Yeah. That is literally what I tell everyone that live, what live fearlessly means to me is it not that you don't have fear. It's not that I don't have any fear. It's that I have fear, I feel it, and I continue to move forward knowing that yeah. I will be just fine with whatever happens. Yeah. I'm a, well, I can take care of the positive and the negative that flow to me. Whichever happens, mm -hmm. you can roll with it. You will be fine. Absolutely. I uh, talk about my, I have a self-sabotage. I have two of them. I have Sally and Cheryl, and they show up, and I imagine them sitting in my living room playing with bubble wrap. And it's funny that I use bubble wrap because I used to say that I wanted to wrap my kids in bubble wrap to keep them safe and to like never let, you know, it's like, it's like the Nemo, right? No, you can't go out into the world. It's so scary. And I just wanted to keep them in bubble wrap so that they would never get hurt. But then mm. that keeps them from having experiences, right? You can't do that. So right. I imagine them sitting in my living room with bubble wrap, sitting on the floor, like, don't you want to play bubble wrap with us? <laughs> it's so fun to just sit here and pop all the pops and isn't that fun you don't want to go out there it's scary out there right you don't want to do that just come and and play with us right like they're enticing me with bubble wrap mm -hmm. or something but that's like what I imagine in my head and yeah. I just tell them thank you for trying to keep me safe but I don't need you right now maybe right. later I'll come play with you but right now there's actually something I want to do, you know? So thanks, but no thanks. But no thanks. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, I have my, my self-doubt things too. I haven't named them yet, but Sally and Cheryl. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Yellow it used to like, it, I don't know why, but they just rotate through like, and I don't know, like, I don't, I always joke that I have like nine alter egos. And so, um, <laughs> I was telling a girl this yesterday that was in polka dot. She was like, wow, you don't seem like as bubbly. And I'm like, 
I'm not in the front of a microphone right now. Like I don't have to be on like all the time. Like this is right. my normal personality. And she was like, yeah. Oh, and I'm like, if I am, if I am just talking like normal, like this, like I am a normal person, people will think there's something wrong with me. <laughs> They'll like, Elaine, are you feeling okay? Where's the Elaine energy? Yeah. And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay. I was like, I have like nine t- personalities. I have my polka dot personality. I've got my, got a hair up my ass, clean in the house, top to bottom personality, get out of my way. I have the, I just want to lay in bed and watch TV personality. Right. I'm like, I got them yep. all. Like I got the watch out shit's about to go down personality, mama bear personality. Like I got them all. She's like, Oh, <laughs> it was so funny. Let's see who shows up today. We'll see who shows up today. You just never know. <laughs> so, okay. So with your fears, so whichever one you want to talk about, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. let's talk about like when you were breaking free from the fear. So either story you want to really dive down more to. So when you were breaking free from your fear and like stepping out and realizing like, this is a bullshit story. I'm following this instead, mm-hmm. right? You're going that new direction. How did your friendships and relationships shift? in your life during those times? Hmm, that's a great question. So I feel like I got a lot of support um, in both scenarios, right? Um, I feel like I had the support um, of my friends and my colleagues and, you know, um, the people in my direct, in my vicinity, my family, where have always been so supportive. And are always just, we're just very encouraging of each other. And so I appreciate that a lot, especially my poor husband that, you know, has, um, as you know, being a photographer means that we work around the clock all the time. And, you know, my husband has picked up the slack at home and does laundry and cooks dinner. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm one of the lucky ones, y'all. Yeah. Like, I got, I got me a man that actually, like, thinks of us as a team and not that it's all on my shoulders. Right. Right. And, um, so he's always been so supportive of all this shit that I want to do, all my madman creations, all my <laughs> new business ideas, all yes. anything. He's always been so supportive. And so that has helped me immensely because I don't yeah. think that I could be where I'm at without that support that, you know, that just comes from being around people that love you and want the best for you. Um, I mean, my polka dot sisters have been incredible throughout this process of my evolution is what I love to call it. And it's interesting because the evolution of me started in polka dot and a lot of my sisters, um, whether they're global or local, have had some impact in the growth and the evolution of my business, yeah. going from you know boudoir photographer to then being a body image coach was because of a dot sister, um, and then changing the name was because of a dot sister, and then writing a book was because of a dot sister, and like. Seriously, everything that I have been doing has been the result of this amazing organization just because when you are surrounded by all of that positivity, yeah. amazing things happen and they, they allow you to just be your authentic self and to follow whatever dreams you have, um, regardless if they think they're stupid or not, like they'll still support you. And like and you, those things that you don't even know exist. Like right. it's the passing thought by someone saying, well, why don't you do that? It takes the outside look yes. of our lives to like, really be like, I don't know. I didn't think of that thought. Like exactly. it wasn't there because we we're so we surface in our day-to-day lives. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't see the forest through the trees, right? You have no idea what's going on around. So you need that outside perspective. Yeah. But the right outside perspective. It cannot be yeah. some a-hole that does not have your best interest in mind. So, yeah. you know, um, Brene Brown is a great influence of mine. And I, you know, a lot of the things that she says really resonates. And it's like, if you're not in the arena getting your ass kicked, you don't get to tell me about what's going on in the arena. Someone just you know? quoted that to me like two days ago. Yeah. 
It's so true though. It's like, who do you think you are to give me advice if you're not getting your ass kicked too? Yep. Like you yeah, got exactly. it. Goes back to the life experience thing. thing. Yeah. It's a life experience thing. Like if you are not taking your lickens just like you're you're telling other people to, then how can you even give your own opinion? Yes, you gotta out. walk the walk, talk the talk. Like you cannot just sit around and tell everybody else what to do if you're not doing the work your damn self. Yeah. I'm a exactly. work in progress and I tell everyone that like I am I am Constant. nowhere close to being done with learning and growing and if right. when that stops you might as well just smother me with a pillow and put me in a grave because I'm done like I don't want to stop growing and learning and evolving and you know transforming and all of those amazing little words because then what's the point of living yep how exactly. boring will life be if you're like oh I'm done I'm perfect I'm so done <laughs> right uh, and the point you? is to Experience life, right? We're not, I've been saying this a lot of the, we're human beings, we're not human doings. Like we're doing right. so many things and we need to be ourselves more. Mm -hmm. And be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Um, so what, so we're already talking about this, but specifically, what advice would you give to viewers about overcoming fear or moving through it? Um, just in general. So one of the things that I like to talk about when I, when I am talking with someone and I'm helping them kind of walk through some stuff, usually in, it's business related stuff, but I go deeper and I'm like, let's get down to the heart of the issue yeah. because this is a surface issue that you're talking about, the struggle in your business or whatever, yep. but it's because of a, of a layer way down deep. And it usually results from a childhood experience. So I talked about my disappointment, right? Yes. That was a childhood experience that I had that created that fear. So the thing that I always tell people is if, um, if you're struggling with money, for example, right? Spending money, making money, um, earning money, like all of it. Yeah. What is the deep seated issue that you have? Ex what do you feel about money? Do you think people that have money are bad? Do you have um, an experience from your childhood where um, maybe your family was poor? And so you have this scarcity mentality where you have to hoard all the money because you could lose it all, you right. know? And yeah. so it's, it's really diving deep. And I encourage people to go see a counselor or a therapist or a coach or whatever you need to work through that issue. Because once you work through that issue, all of the surface shit will start to work itself out. But you cannot move forward until you deal with the actual fear that you have going on. And that's what I did was I had to work through the bullshit, work through, are people really gonna make fun of me for leaving the house and having scars? No! That right. was my own internal story. Did it happen like in real life? No. So let's, right? So fear is a liar, number yep. one. Fear is a liar. And it is false evidence appearing real is what fear mm -hmm. stands for. So yep. you cannot live your life in fear. Now there's a difference between fear and danger. Okay, so Will Smith has a fantastic quote about fear and danger, and there is a difference. So the fear is, I'm scared of spiders. The danger is, I'm being chased by a bear. Right. Okay, one of those is a fear, and one of those is your life is in danger. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay uh, to say that you're afraid of something, but are you in danger? No, unlikely, probably not, right? The other thing that I have been doing a lot of uh, research about is as I've been talking about childhood experiences is linking childhood trauma to the entrepreneur and how does it impact the way that uh, we behave as business owners. Yeah. And so, um, holy crap. So I did this survey. Uh, my goal was to get 200 responses and I wound up with 228. So that was awesome. 
Yeah. And I ask, wow. people will tell you their deepest, darkest secrets in an, in an anonymous survey. So I learned um, what uh, people's um, traumatic childhood experiences were. The most wow. popular was divorce. Their parents got divorced. So there's a study called the ACEs study, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And there's a test you can take. It has 10 questions. And if you say yes, then it's one point. You add up your points. And the interesting part of this study is that the more points you have, the more likely you are to have um, like scientific re proven, you will have heart disease, cancer, you will have um, an addiction, you will wind up in prison, like thing, crazy, mm. crazy things, right? Yeah. And so um, the coping mechanisms that we use to self-soothe, um, number one was food. Oh, yeah. Number two was alcohol. Number three was shopping. So yeah. those are interesting ways that people are self-soothing. But I was interested in really finding out how it was impacting the entrepreneur. And it impacts the, the entrepreneur with their confidence. They do not have the confidence that is necessary for them to feel like they are um, successful, huge amounts of fear of failure going on. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it's like this whole trickle down effect. So it's been a very interesting to uh, research this and I would love to even dissect it even further. Um, Cause I did, were you an entrepreneur? Are you an employee? Are you retired? Are you a student? You know, like, um, so I would love to take the opportunity, but I don't have the time right now cause I'm like working on this project. And, but it's just fascinating to me because um, I feel like fear is, is one of the biggest reasons why people are not finding the success that they're looking for in their lives, in their businesses, in their careers. It's all fear-based. And nine yeah. times out of 10, it's because of, an, of a childhood experience. So you got to yeah. go through it. You got to visit it and you got to, you got to deal with it and acknowledge it. And then you can start to heal and move forward. I'm not saying you have to forget it because yeah. that's not going to happen. Right. But the other thing that I've been learning is that our brains don't know the difference between a truth and a lie. So <laughs> you can actually rewrite your story and eliminate any of the bullshit that you don't want to include. And you just tell yourself every day that this is your story. Your brain will not know the, the difference between the truth and a lie. Yep. I, and I'm I, like, I boom, that's freaking awesome, right? <laughs> what is my story? Yeah, to you it. can make it up. Like, you can talk about having this lavish lifestyle if you want to. Like, your brain will not know the difference. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> so interesting. That is so interesting. I don't know. Wow. It, I, think, I think that that's absolutely spot on, though, with entrepreneurs and it's it's the self-doubt and this lack of confidence in in being successful if they're the person that they want like that they can be successful enough to help other people in their businesses and all of those things um i was just having this conversation with multiple different people but like two days ago i was having that conversation with someone again and it pretty much exactly what you just said i'm like yep that solidifies everything that we're talking about mm -hmm. that she asked me for advice about a topic that I'm hearing from everyone. Like, uh, literally the topic is that people have so much self doubt that they can't be successful. That's literally what I told her. So absolutely. I would love to, it, when you have the time to dissect that more and you figure out more stuff, like that'll be really awesome to hear those details mm -hmm. again. Yeah, I know. I know. I it's, it'll happen. It will. Yeah. It'll happen. Mm-hmm. Your brain will lock it in there. It'll come back around somehow. I know. I know. I know. As soon as I can get this, this program launched, then I'll be like, ah. On to the next. <laughs> How can I continue to grow and help other people grow? And that's just what we yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So what is, tell us one thing. What is the one thing that you would want the viewers to take away from your stories that you just mentioned to us? Mm. You know, you can live your life full of regret and doubt and fear, and that's really not a life that's, you're not really living. And it takes some courage, I, you know, lady balls, whatever the hell you want to call it, 
but you just have to decide it is, it is a decision. Um, fear is a decision. Overwhelm is a decision. It's literally making the choice and saying, I am scared as hell, but I'm going to do it anyways. Like okay. it's literally making that conscious choice and fighting the fighting. It's like having a, a fight with yourself, with your inner talk. Like it's literally let's battle. Right. Mm -hmm. And I will win because I am supposed to win. Um, but it, it literally is a choice. And I don't know that people really fully understand that. And, um, interestingly in um, my book, like that's the entire secret weapon is the entire thing. The very end is like, okay, now you have a choice. Do you want to continue living with poisoning your mind and, and living in that place of fear and doubt and shame and guilt and, you know, all of the yucky stuff? Or do you want to find joy and be happy and be positive? And I'm not saying that it's a fake it till you make it, but it's actually right. deciding that you have value and that you um, are worth it, that you yeah. have worth and value and that you deserve to be happy, that every single person deserves to be happy. And it doesn't matter if you had a shitty childhood, you still have a choice to be happy. Absolutely. Plain and simple. It's a choice. So choose wisely. Decide. There you go. <laughs> it's decide. Yep. Boom. Like Boom. mic drop, Boom. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Totally agree. So living, talking about how, you know, you're not living, you're not living if you're taking on that situation. So now that you yourself know how to live more fearlessly, you move through it, right? Even though we feel it, where do you see yourself five years from today? Um, you know, ruling the world and all that beauty. Right. <laughs> Global domination. <laughs> I know, global domination. Um, you know, I have always seen myself um, helping others on a bigger scale. Um, so, you know, I love speaking. I would love to be on bigger stages and just helping inspire women um, around the world to, you know, just love themselves deeply and to accept that, you know, um, rule number one, you will receive a body, right? That is rule number one. And all of the, the things that happen in your life is, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's yours. And stop trying to think that you have to look a certain way in order to be loved or be happy. And, you know, um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to go big. I'm a go big or go home kind of girl. So um, I'll probably have written 10 other books by then. And <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I love yeah. it. So talking, uh, talking to a bigger scale on a larger stages and yeah. just going for it to just empower more women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, it. I love it. So, um, where is the best place to connect with you? And just to clarify, do you only work with women? No, I work with all the peoples. I work all with the all the peoples. It's interesting yeah. though that I mostly attract women, but yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to working with men. Men have problems too, right? Oh. I count, I, I coach my husband all the time. <laughs> Who right. doesn't know it? <laughs> right. He doesn't know. He doesn't he'll, be, know. he'll be like talking about something shitty at, that happened at work or something. And I'm like taking from Brene Brown because I love her so much. I'm like, do you think they're doing the best they can? <laughs> you okay, you're like, are you kidding me? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, so how does that change the way that you complain about them now if they're doing the best they can and he's just like shit <laughs> go to mind okay. oh, I love it yeah so I totally use my whatever personal development stuff that I, I like voodoo it yeah. on him well that's why women are really great um to work women are really great to work with in that aspect because that's what we do we, we don't influence we don't them take it you know, we don't take the information. We bring it back to our communities and back to our own families to build yep. them stronger too. Like yep. it doesn't just end with us. 
No, it is. We are sprinkling the magic. Yes. When my daughter calls me and says, mom, I need a pep talk. And I'm like, blah, 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 right? Because, you know, and I'm like, how's that? She's like, okay, I feel better. Thank you. Yay. That's amazing. You know what I mean? Like us women, man, we are like, we don't take, uh uh-uh. We're just like, let's sprinkle that juiciness to everyone we know. Exactly. And that's exactly what you're like. You're giving the examples of it right now. Like you, you're doing it to your husband. He doesn't even know it, but that's okay. They don't need to know necessarily. He doesn't need to know that I'm absorbing it ourselves. And then we're giving it to the people around us. Like we want our world to be better better around us. We're not going to just take it for ourselves. We're going to give it to the people around us. Yeah. So it makes everybody's life better. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It's selfish to keep it to yourself. Absolutely. I totally agree. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we need to be selfless and just give it to everybody. We need to give it to everybody. They all need it, right? Well, tell us where you can give it to everybody. So I'm all over the webs. So um, ElaineTurso.com. Um, my Facebook page is Elaine Turso Strategizes. Um, I'm on Instagram as Elaine Turso, Pinterest. I'm all the places. LinkedIn, I'm pretty much everywhere, uh-huh. um, even on Snapchat. <laughs> I don't have you on Snapchat yet. What the hell? Yeah. Well, you know, oh, wait, I'm not I gonna do. lie. I you on Snapchat. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Like I got it because when I had teenagers, yeah. <laughs> I needed to be where they were. Yeah. And I kind of was a snoopy mom like that. Like, what are my kids doing? What do I need to know what's going on? And so yeah. I that was my way of like kind of spying on them. Until one time I figured out, my daughter figured out I was following her on Twitter. <laughs> and I had it so set up that, so every time she posted, I would get a notification. And one time she was so mad. She comes out into the, because she heard my phone go ding. And she had just posted oh. something. And so she comes out into the living room and like literally holds her phone and pushes submit. And it was like gibberish. And my phone goes ding. And she was like, oh, you're full. She was so mad, and so she like <laughs> blocked me. <laughs> and I had to tell her we are not friends anymore. You cannot block me. Like I'm not. You are not allowed to block me from your Twitter if you're gonna have one. Like wherever you are, I am too, and that is not negotiable. <laughs> now oh, she doesn't have any social media. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. Well, you know, mama bear mode, right? We've talked about oh, that. Man. I'm like, I, w- and I was like Snoopy. Like I would, I just wanted to make sure that my kids were being safe and that they weren't, you know, and if there were times that taking I wouldn't be advantage- getting taken advantage of or anything, yeah. you know, I would text story. her and be like, are you, are you on crack in a ditch? And she'd be like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> just making sure. Just check in. Just check in. Make sure you're not in a ditch somewhere. We're good. I love it. I love it. Well, they're doing great. She's out of the house and she's yeah. she's a car saleswoman. Like I know. You're doing great, mom. I know. She moved out. Hasn't moved home once yet. She's lived in in uh this is her Don't third say place. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm gonna call this a win. Like parenting win over here for me. Check that one off the box. For I'll sure. tell you, when I first moved out and then I had a baby, I moved my ass back home. Yeah. Right? Cause I'm like, uh, oh, I ain't doing this shit by myself. Like <laughs> I need my mom. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. I exactly. Love it. I love it. Well, Elaine, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on so and sharing awesome. a little bit more about you. yourself and telling us about your fears and like how you move through them and give you more information. Um, everyone that's watching, please go connect with Elaine on any of the avenues that she mentioned. Um, can they pick up your book from your website? They can. It's on, it's on Amazon as well. This is what it looks like. So you have to be okay with profanity. It's yes. got a little, a little thing there. Let's just bloop that out right there. Um, I was, I'm too vulgar for Pinterest. So <laughs> No, no. Yeah. But so, you're still um, there. Yeah, you can still you can find on, my, on my website, it's um, elaineterso.com. And then I do have a group that is um, getting unfed mind body business. Ooh, fun. Interesting. And I have one, um, Elaine Terso's body positive babes as well. So I kind of have a mix of ones that are okay with swearing and ones that are kind of, <laughs> you know, more conservative you know, or, you know, you know, whatever. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everyone that's tuning in. Remember to love yourself and live fearlessly. Thank you so much for joining us, Elaine. Thanks love you so much. Me. And thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day.